Hello, how are you? It's Simrajit Kormann here and I make content for aspiring solicitors. I make content about careers. I vlog my life as a trainee solicitor and show my journey towards becoming a qualified solicitor in the UK. And today's video may be controversial, I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm just going to be very, very honest about the things that I didn't like at the University of Bristol. I studied law there. And I guess maybe a bit of a disclaimer is I studied at the University of Bristol from 2015 down to 2018. So of course my opinion of the university is three years old. Things may have changed since then. If they have, let me know if you are a recent graduate at Bristol. I'd love to hear your thoughts about your uni the university. And even though in this video I'm going to be talking about the things that I specifically hated at university, I would never ever go back in time and change my decision about studying at Bristol. I honestly really loved it there. However, in this video, I'm going to be talking about four things that I felt really maybe let down the experience just a little bit. Just a quick ad break before we start the video. I promise it will be super quick. I just want to talk about these goodies that Cherries have kindly sent to me. Cherries is an app where you can get everyday household items as shown in this video for sometimes cheaper than retail prices. I definitely picked up some bargains here. If you're interested, download the Cherries app via the link in my description below and you can get 20% off your first order if you use the code SIMRAN20. Thank you, now let's get back to the video. So the first thing that I didn't really like about law school at Bristol was the elitism. There was Oh God, where can I start with this? So obviously at university, I think there are certain universities out there where you can really, I guess, tell the difference that people have in their upbringing and their background. And this is not me saying if you've had a good upbringing and you've come from a privileged background that you are automatically a rude person or you're automatically entitled. It's not that at all. It was just a few experiences here and there and I'm talking very, very rare experiences. So one of these experiences was I was walking out of a lecture. I think this was actually my second week of my first year. So very, very new to the university and I overheard two people in front of me saying, I can't believe our lecturer doesn't even pronounce her T's. How can she even, you know, teach? I, I'm not even going to go to her lectures. I don't think she's a good teacher. I don't know. And this lecture was actually really good. So I think that comment was just uncalled for, if I'm honest with you. And I think that was just one thing that made me feel like, wow, do I even belong here, basically? The second time where I felt like there was a massive, I guess, divide in people's upbringings and opinions to the point where it, it clashed was, I'm not sure whether I'm going to remember these facts properly, but the Wills Memorial Building at Bristol is our law building and it's absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning building. But I think it's named after a slave trader and there were a lot of, I guess, protests and stuff happening about that. And that was the one time at university where I felt like there was such a clear divide. We've heard about in recent news stories about that statue falling down in Bristol. So when I heard about that, it was very much a moment of, wow, this is something that even when I was at university, we were protesting about statues and these kind of monuments being named after people who did the most horrible things. So it's that was something that I think really stuck with my university experience. And I think at school, I guess I had a bit of a naive view of all of us being the same and coming from the same upbringing. But when I was at university, it really brought to light in a very harsh reality of how how different my upbringing was to other people. And then this then contributed sometimes to my feeling of not belonging at university. I was very intimidated of people essentially who I felt like had a higher upbringing. And that essentially made me feel like I couldn't be part of the corporate sphere. I couldn't work well in the professional field because I was not made for this. I did not have that upbringing to survive in that kind of culture. And I'm really glad that I got myself out of that mindset because right now I'm in the corporate world and I think I'm doing pretty well for myself. So I'm glad I got out of that and didn't really think that you have to be of a certain background in order to get this kind of career. I also think that the teaching at Bristol, some of my tutors were absolutely fantastic. I mean, they were so inspiring, but some of them, the way they taught was so boring and uninspiring. And I mean, talking about literally reading off a lecture slide and 
I mean, this is probably the case at any university, not only Bristol, but I've, I just found that really uninspiring. And it was a bit like, why can't you guys I engage your audience a little bit? I don't know. So that's one thing that I, I didn't really like at law school either. I also felt like sometimes your creativity in law gets dimmed because you have to go by these set modules. I think my biggest thing with law school was how impractical some of the modules were. And I, I really didn't understand why I had to learn some of these things, which I'm not going to use. I like that whole argument that you hear about all the time of when am I going to use Pythagoras theorem in my life? That's how I felt about some of my modules. However, one really good thing that Bristol did was introduce modules in my final year that were a lot more practical. So I did modules um, like one module was me basically working in a pro bono clinic and then doing coursework about my experience there. That was really practical because I had real life experience with real clients and helping them out with their uh, their legal issues and the second thing was a module called corporate law simulation at university and that was essentially you would act like the buyers and sellers on each side of a transaction and every week or every seminar you would learn about a new process in the MA process but you would actually be acting like you're in it it was those kind of modules actually that brought me back into being interested in law Whereas I felt like the really theoretical ones, they just pushed me further away. But that's just my opinion. Some people really enjoyed those theoretical modules. I personally just really wanted to learn in a more practical manner, which is why I really enjoyed the LPC, because it was just so much more practical and more applicable to the life of a solicitor. And the last thing I'd like to say about what I didn't like about studying law at the University of Bristol, and to be fair, this is probably something that again could be said for a lot of law schools around the UK, is that there is such a push on you studying law at university, trying to gain a training contract or a vacation scheme in commercial law, and then qualifying as a solicitor, and then you go up the ranks, so associate, managing associate partner. And I don't think there is enough discussion on the different routes that there are available to you. I think there are so many resources and things available to those of you who want to become commercial law solicitors, which is great, and that should be encouraged. But I sometimes felt like at university, if you wanted to, for example, become a barrister or you wanted to go into family law or if you wanted to, for example, try something completely new outside of law, that was not really encouraged as such. And I think law is such a versatile degree. You don't only need to become a solicitor after studying law. You could go into a whole range of other fields. And I wish that was encouraged more at university rather than just placing this emphasis on this rigid structure. And also, there was nothing at university that I encountered that offered in-house opportunities it was always in private practice firms and it felt like private practice was the only way to qualify as a solicitor i only realized afterwards that you can paralegal in in-house firms in their legal teams you can get a training contract in in-house legal teams and you can qualify and become a solicitor in in-house legal teams as well so i didn't know any of that when i was at university and i wish there was more emphasis on that as well rather than just going down the typical route that everyone including myself ended up going down so that's everything that i'd like to say about my time i hope that video was somewhat helpful hopefully it wasn't too negative at the end of the day those were only four things that i didn't really kind of like about law school in terms of studying law i'm not sure whether i'd do it whether i'd do it again if i'm honest with you if i could go back in time maybe i would have studied english or history but then the gdl might have been super intense so i don't know at the end of the day i'm just happy with the routes that i've taken in my career journey and where i studied but these are just four little things to just have an honest chat with you about things that I encountered at university. I will let you all go now. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.